Hello everybody, it's Alex. I have graduated, I have finished university, it's done. And we need to talk, we need to talk about university now. How I can give my really strong and honest opinion since I'm done. Yeah, let's get started, man. Let's first talk about uh, whether it is worth it. I checked my SFE, I'm 62,000 pounds in debt. Obviously, the way the UK system works with the debt situation is it's pretty nice. Like you can, it's not the same type of debt as you borrowing money from a normal bank. So that's okay. I can still get a mortgage on a house. Nevertheless, it's sixty-two thousand pounds that that I have to pay. That I have to pay. How do I feel about that? I feel pretty okay. An electrical engineering degree, I think, will pay off that money pretty quickly. I think that this was a good investment for me. So overall, thumbs up. I think other people cannot say the same people who finish like psychology degrees sorry for those people <laughs> now in terms of what i think about university in terms of education just the quality of teaching unfortunately like school it's very lecturer dependent certain lecturers are really good at teaching and you will enjoy your classes and it will make you want to go to class and therefore get a better grade and have a fond time. I had a lecturer that taught me electromagnetics and he was the guy, like he was the guy. The way he, and he was like this, I think he was like Serbian or North Macedonia. I don't know what, his name was Bukar Novak, yeah? And he spoke like my dad in terms of accent and he was a physicist and uh, it was cool because it kind of, it gave me an insight as to how a physics degree looks like because I originally wanted to do a physics degree, but I thought about my employability. And so I did the electrical engineering instead. Uh, and I think it was a good decision. Uh, I don't regret it at all. He's probably, there's probably three lecturers I had over the space of three years that were like, wow, these are good teachers. So unfortunately, good teachers at university are still rare. Most professors are there to mainly do research. That's one thing to point out now. In terms of the skills you learn, so now, so I just want to remind you guys that I, I, so I graduated on the 16th of July, okay, it's now, when I'm recording this, 26th of October, I've been unemployed for a while now, it's getting to like the four month mark soon, and I'm not happy about that, I've been unlucky, I'll probably speak about but my process of finding a job, that's, one, once I find a job, I'll speak about the process, for now, Let's not worry about that. However, what skills do you get? So now, the, the, I think the big question is, does university prepare you for the real world in terms of skill set? Now, in my case, so here, I'm just going to outline some stats. So I went to a, a good university in the UK. I think it's like top 10 and in electrical engineering, it's like top 20. So it's a, it's a pretty good university. It's not the best, but... There's, I think, over 100 universities, just over. So uh, in the top 20%, let's just say, of universities. I did a bachelor's, not a master's, and I did an internship. Now, if I have just done three years of education, I would be finished. Okay, I would be finished. This job process thing, I feel like I would have, I don't know, cried. I don't know what I would do, to be honest, because... I only, now that I'm thinking about it, I only feel like I've learned in my final year and during my internship. My other, my first two years just feel like, like filler years. It, 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 I guess they do build on to get to the final year, but if there's literally nothing from my first two years that I really need to like recite, remember, that is necessary to me. Maybe like some C code, like I guess I had a programming module in C that is very useful because I now have had interviews where I've been told to write C code on paper. So there are glimpses of it, but overall your final year is your big year. Like this is where you actually learn. I guess it's also the mindset you're like, all oh, right, I need to lock in. This is where all the mark, this is where the final, like, this is the majority of where the marks come from. So I have mixed feelings on that. I feel like you unfortunately, so this is my conclusion. Unfortunately, even a university degree from a good university doing electrical engineering will not give you the skill sets you need for the most part to be employed. I don't think so. I don't think so. So look, so look at my situation now, yeah? I got a first class degree. Not that it really matters that much, 
but just whatever. It just just for the stats, I got a first. I got a seventy three percent average, so I don't think I scraped it. I have a whole year of internship experience at a good company. I did both software and hardware. I am now looking for jobs in software, and it's be and I've been looking for a job for like six months now. I haven't. I've been very close. I must. So in my unique case, I've been very close many times. I got to final stage interviews many times, but it just makes me question. You know, there seems to always be someone better, right? Uh, I am not that guy who programs all day every day. I really enjoy programming, but it's not something that I would do after I've just you know done it at work, for example. Some people make games on the side after they finish their nine to five as a software engineer. I'm not like I'm not that guy. I'm also not that guy to have a side project in programming going on whilst I have programming coursework. I won't join engineering society. I'd rather do a sport. That's that's the type of guy I am. So engineering is not my whole world. I have a YouTube channel. And I think most people are like me. There's very little people that are 100% on this one thing and they just grind it out. Those people are like excellent. They're, they are excellent. But that's very rare because very little people on the world know exactly what they want to do with their life. Nevertheless, I feel personally like I'm a pretty competent person, even though I'm not, you know, the, the upper echelon of electrical engineering graduates. And I'm having a hard time finding the job. I don't know what it is like. I, I'm, I just sympathize with someone who didn't find an internship because they maybe were unlucky or they started there maybe a bit too late because they just didn't get the information. And they finished with like a 2-1, God forbid, a 2-2. Two, two. And now what? The UK is pretty taxing on, on students who don't even get a 2-1. Like if you get a 2-2 two, two or below, I don't think you can actually find a job. It's that bad. It's that bad. And it's crazy because that's a, that's a big proportion of students. And actually, there's a, there's a very really smart marketing guy that talks about this, about the graduate market. And it's a pretty terrible thing. I'll play it right now so that you guys can hear it. I think it's fa I think it's fascinating and unfortunate. When you recruit someone straight out of university or you recruit anybody for a job in which they have no experience at all, okay, you don't know anything about them, realistically, but you need a proxy. So the proxy seems to have become, you know, Russell Group University 2-1 or above. And everybody uses that as the first stage filter for their search. And everything that doesn't meet those criteria, or everybody who doesn't meet that, those criteria, effectively disappears out of the marketplace, despite the fact that they may be possessed of unbelievable talents. They just either had a good time at university, or a part of that very large part of the population who are very, very clever, but don't feel motivated doing academic, hypothetical things, okay? Yeah, that's basically the conclusion. I think that university will not prepare you adequately you have to be extremely proactive. People that do three-year degrees, don't take an internship, they've done something, that, like they usually did something in the summer or they have like a part-time job, you get me? Or they've got connections, their dad owns an engineering firm, they can just jump back in. But if you're someone like me who doesn't have any connections uh, or did not when they started going to university, they just like electrical engineering, you have to be very proactive. So what do you do? Do your education properly. I think there is a lot to learn in the electrical engineering curriculum. Just keep that in mind that will never be enough. If you find something you're really interested in and you're in your first year especially or maybe in your second year and you have uh, and you, your summer's free, just do a project. This is very hard because you're all, you're in the summer, you don't want to study. But is this if this is something you really care about, you're very interested in, uh, that's something smart to do. Obviously, I strongly recommend finding a do, doing a placement. Honestly, I think that is extremely important for an engineer, especially. I think it's for everyone. Everyone's everyone at university is there to hopefully then find a job. So, find an internship. Do everything you can to do get an internship. In terms of how to, what do you need to do to get an internship? You you should get a first in your first year because actually. 
it's very easy to get a first. Really, really easy. Honestly, I know when you're in your first year, obviously the educa education system has changed. You've got loads of exams, semester one, semester two, especially semester one, it's revision. It's revision. If you've done A-level maths, physics, and computer science, them type of A-levels, it's like, it's that with a bit of, you know, with a, with a bit of season on top, yeah? There's very little fresh content especially in the first semester by the time you get to second semester you're good to go so try and get a really good grade because um, because the reality is that most people looking for internships don't have any experience what's the only thing that is is different about you and the other candidate is probably going to be your grade and maybe some sort of work experience you did in, in like year 12 or year 13 when you were 17 now you can get internships or, uh, like small little work experience things when you're in your first year or even beforehand but i am let's let's forget about a levels and pre-18 education you can do that however engineering companies are not great at it uh banks are really good at it so i'm uh, it breaks my heart to say this but if you're a stem student you like programming a bank, a spring insight program at a bank is a pretty good idea because you get to see how it is in industry. You get to talk to people who are there already. And it's just, it's a nice booster on a CV. You've got a big name on your, on your CV. Yeah, vibes. Let's go. I would recommend, I had no idea. Like that, that is even a possibility. Uh, it's something that I wish I knew earlier that I'm telling you that. Just take that into account. Another thing that I also did not think about is hackathons. I knew they existed, but I didn't know where to find them, what to do. Yeah, loads of big companies have hackathons. For all my viewers, which are women or who are black or are black women, it's a pretty small amount of people. Uh, but you guys are a minority group. There is extra um, events happening for you. So that you guys, you guys can get involved in hackathons or yeah, like tech events. So please use that. Uh, please use it uh, if you want to be an engineer, obviously, or someone in this in the world of tech. For us, which are not black and are not women, uh, those do exist as well, but they're just uh, more competitive um, because there's more of us, <laughs> and rightly so. Uh, these companies are trying to incentivize black people and black women and women to get involved in the tech world because there needs to be a bit more balance. Hackathons and spring uh, spring internships, spring insight weeks, spring programs, spam those keywords on Google, something will come up. Unfortunately, there will be mainly banks, but it's better than nothing. That's a good start. Um, first year project, important. If there's one thing you wanna put your effort into, it's your first year project because that's where you have the first teamwork and experience. You got a project, you have to solve some problem, you have to work with other people. And that's for some reason why companies love to ask you questions. So when you ever, when you hopefully get your first interview or whenever you get an interview, there will, I am very confident there'll be a question. Have you worked on a group project? Tell me, how did you interact with your other course mates? Boom, do you get me that question? Wow, I got asked that so many times. So basically, I thought if you're going to be proactive on one thing in your first year, it's your group project. Just smash your modules, just revise when it's exam season, get the grades. But in terms of really like putting an effort in and enjoying the, the, the teaching and the experience, it's the group project. Just yeah, put effort into all your all your group projects because they are the most applicable to the real world and that's what engineering degrees do way better than any other subject that's what i think engineering degrees are the best degrees only because of that one thing there is a massive emphasis on group project and with that comes management not just the engineering side of things it's the getting things done in a limited space of time and you've got project management um which is boring but it has to get done and it means that you can have a very diverse career. You can be be a manager, you can be an engineer, you can be a scientist, you know, you can do what you want. You can really do what you want with an engineering degree. There's a reason why the most millionaires in the world, I think, are have engineering degrees. It's because of that reason. It's the most well-rounded and most useful course. Yeah, I think I've covered my ground, but, <laughs> but okay, I think university, 
it's still worth it because I've been talking from more like a employability, yeah, employability and education standpoint, but there's the social aspect of university that that people that hate on university forget about. You can meet loads of really cool people from different sides of the world and they're all in one place and people are all the same age. It's it's like I mean for me it's a it's a it's a incredible place because I'm also extroverted. So and I love speaking to people. So when I get to meet people from different sides of the world, I'm like, wow, tell me, tell me how it is. You know what I'm saying? Because they can tell you firsthand they're from there. Like in my final year at university, I got to meet loads of people from Dubai. But these they weren't uh, UAE nationals. They were just different people from all over the world that lived in Dubai. And yeah, that world was really interesting. So I would say I absolutely do not regret going to university. It's it's definitely not for everyone though. If you're extremely focused on securing the bag, making money, do a degree apprenticeship. There's loads of them now. You still get a bachelor's degree. Obviously, it's not as shiny as a university degree from Oxford or Cambridge in engineering, but it's still really good. You get a job instantly. You're making 20K a year. And then when you finish the apprenticeship, you're making bank. So if money is your main motivation, you shouldn't be going to university. If you want to have a good life experience, have fun memories, look back and be like, rah, this was lit, you know, which I do now when I visit Loughborough, I've just graduated. But even now I'm like, wow, this place was incredible. It's definitely in the past. I'm trying to think if there's anything else to say. Mm -mm -mm. No, I don't think so. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. And I, I do plan to actually make videos in a bit, everyone.